Hey guys, this is the T7 unit from Dresser Wayne. This is their EMV solution for Vista series pumps. Uh, there is another version of this also for partner pumps like Gilbarco, um, what have you. So this is the basic unit here. You have your seven inch touchscreen running Windows CE. Uh, notice the application's not loaded yet. I'm actually loading that now. Have your SPM with the full travel function keys. This is a new SPM, so if you go out to replace an SPM at one of these sites, if you do not bring the T7 compatible SPM, it will not work. We have our speed pass, our zebra printer outlet, and our secure card reader. The way you access this unit is from the side. I have a key over here. Um, you do not want to drop the bezel on this. If you do drop the bezel, it will not breach your SPM, but it will put it into maintenance mode and require a one-shot to get back out. So when you up, when you install these, make sure you let the sites know that if they need to open the bezel for any reason, um, they are going to have to call a tech to put their SPM back into operational mode. So if we go ahead and open the door here, you'll see they're running a standard Zebra printer. And uh, over here we have the jade board it's a compact version for the t7 see down here this gold connector that's what connects the glass capacitive touchscreen the actual qvga on this um, is also touchscreen but this makes it so the customers aren't actually touching the actual screen but a glass membrane on the outside got your backlight for the spm i'm sorry for the uh, keypad down here we have the spm you can see it kind of mounts at an angle we have our four USB drives. Uh, the top drive is reserved for the SPM, but the bottom three drives are available for using uh, software upgrades or what have you. So you can see currently I've got a thumb drive in there now. I'm actually loading the OS application for the IX Pay. When you do this, if you rep the, the units come with the software on it, but should you have to replace a unit as I'm doing today, it will not be shipped with software. So you have to configure a special thumb drive, put it in, reboot the unit, let it sit for 15 to 20 minutes, and then uh, remove the thumb drive and power it down. It will not give you any, any kind of indicator to let you know that it's done loading. So just give it 20 minutes. At the end of 20 minutes, you're pretty safe to remove the USB and reboot, at which point you're ready to load the, uh, the actual iXPay software that'll bring you up to your normal operation mode. We'll get into that as soon as this is done loading. Okay, so it's been 20 minutes. The IX application is installed, but you can see we have no touchscreen. Uh, we're also running a really old version of uh, the IX Pay, at least relative to these T7s. Uh, this right now is on version 116, and the current version is 165. So we're gonna go ahead and upgrade that, and then we are going to push a config file for the touchscreen. One thing to note, the T7 units do not get their touchscreen programming from the POS. So you do actually have to use a touchscreen configuration tool that's provided by Wayne um, to configure your touchscreen and, and all screens that would show up on your touchscreen have to be configured. So I believe it's 93 hex files you have to manipulate to program your full touchscreen. So let's go ahead and upgrade this to the 3.0.101.165, that's the current version, and we'll push a config file. I'll show you how that's done. So open the dispenser, and we're going to put our thumb drive in and reboot. Okay. So now it's loading the OS. In just a few minutes here, it's gonna pop up into the service utility, and from there, we will go through the steps to upgrade the software. Okay, so here is our service configurator and we're just gonna go right into software update. And we're doing the IX software. And we're gonna tell it, yes, go ahead and upgrade.
right, I'm going to go ahead and pause this now because this, this particular step takes about seven minutes. And then I'll, uh, I'll start up again once it gets past the long wait here. Okay, so I completed the file transfer and upgraded the OS for both the SPM and the SVM. Now it's going to update the uh, IX OS, at which point it should go through a reboot and uh, We'll load our config so we get the correct touch screen, the right, right soft keys, and uh, we'll also capture logs at that point. Whole upgrade process takes about 20 minutes from start to finish. So a little bit longer than a standard cat board, but I think it's doing a lot more stuff. It's going to do an automatic reset. It brings up the soft key, but you don't have to actually hit it. It'll do it by itself. It's a nice feature. I don't know if you could hear that on the camera, but when this thing reboots, um, you will hear your SPM initialize. It'll do a series of two beeps to let you know that the SPM is online. If you don't hear those beeps, then Typically you unplug your SPM, uh, the power connector on it, and plug it back in and it'll reinitialize and then the system will come up fine. This part goes by pretty fast typically, but it's uh, copying all the files that it upgraded to the flash. Doing the same thing for the SPM. So now you might hear it again if you don't, the car's not too loud. You'll hear that SPM initialize again here in a second. It's going to reboot, and then it's going to connect to the SPM, at which point it should quickly finalize the install and then boot back into the service utility. The SPM is connected and it passed all its checks. Now it's just going to do the display authentication. Just a side note, if uh, you ever, when it gets to this step, if you ever get a uh, error message about the display battery being low, you're going to open up the unit and you'll see a round, like a watch battery on the back of the display. Just tap on that and it, uh, it repair the issue it's something that Wayne is is working on it's a known issue okay so the software upgrade is done we're gonna hit OK it's gonna bring us back to this screen here at this point we're gonna go ahead and update our config and we're gonna do the SDVM config now I've already made it a config file 
or these dispensers and I will do another video showing you how to build these thumb drives and do the config files. Okay, the update was successful. We are going to quickly get logs. We're going to go to retrieve files and we're going to retrieve logs. It's going to pull all the log files from the unit. Right now this is mandatory because these installs are all beta and we have to send these to Wayne. But down the road it's a good thing to pull because you can actually analyze some of these logs and see what error messages you're getting if you have a, a unit that's not communicating with the POS or whatnot. So good, good habit to get into doing. Okay, now it's getting the SPM logs. I skipped through some of it because the first couple logs take several minutes each to, to pull. All right, so the logs retrieved successfully. We are now going to exit the configuration utility, pull our thumb drive, and reboot the unit. And there's that battery. If you get the display error, uh, you're just gonna tap on that battery reboot the unit and that uh, display error should go away, it should boot up fine. Oops, we didn't reboot the unit. Alright, so at this point it should boot up into the newer version of the iXPay with our correct screen configuration. It goes pretty fast, a lot faster than a typical Ovation or Ovation 2 dispenser. Once it launches that IX program, it, it moves pretty quick. And you can see how fast it went to one moment, please. Going through another reboot for some reason. It's done that on a couple units. It doesn't do it every time. I'm not really sure what the reasoning is for that. Okay, it's gonna go through loading process. It's actually gonna do it twice. 
It does twice on a system commander, it only does it once on a nucleus. Wayne is not exactly sure why that is, but just be prepared. So there was the first load and a really brief second load, but now you can see we have the correct touchscreen, correct logo, and everything is spaced down. So like I said, in the next video, I'll show you how to configure the touchscreens. And that's it. So we loaded the display and cap board and upgraded the software to the current version, captured logs, and got everything back up and running. So now we just gotta put the rain cover and plug the speaker back in, and we're all done here.